It's everyone's biggest fear. What if it's a tumor? Well, what are tumors anyways, and should you worry about them? Hey guys, Julia here for D News. Most people, when they hear the word tumor, think cancer, but that's not always the case. There are a lot of different types of tumors, or neoplasms as they're called by medical professionals. The two main types, benign, which means it stays as it is and doesn't change, and malignant, which signals something bad like cancer, which means it can spread. There's a lot of tumor terminology. Names of tumors most often come from where they grow. Like adenomas come from epithelial tissue, which is a thin layer or membrane that surrounds your organs. Fibroids grow on fibrous or connective tissues. Fibrom durum, hard fibroma, is a common type. They're those skin tags you get on your neck or armpit or elsewhere. Hemangiomas are more like those strawberry birthmarks. They're just a collection of too many blood cells in one place. These are often temporary and last just a few years in childhood. Those are just the benign tumors. Carcinomas are cancerous tumors found in epithelial cells. Sarcomas start off in connective tissue such as cartilage and bones. Leukemia originates in the marrow and generally matures in the blood or lymph nodes. And blastomas form from embryonic tissues. While they all go by different names, many tumors come from an overgrowth of tissues, maybe caused by a mistaken DNA. DNA might be damaged from radiation, tobacco smoke, or other environmental agents, or maybe it's just a stroke of bad luck. Whatever causes it, this mutation makes the cell divide uncontrollably basically making clones of themselves. As the cells pile up, a tumor grows. If it grows big enough, it can harm nearby organs and tissues, or sometimes a part of the tumor can break off and take up residence in another part of the body, which is when cancer metastasizes. There's another idea, though, that stem cells trigger tumors. These wonky stem cells drive tumor growth and, just like normal stem cells, can give rise to differentiated cells. These stem cells are especially good at resisting treatment like chemotherapy. Chemotherapy might wipe out those differentiated cells but leave the cancer stem cells behind so they come back stronger and in greater numbers. And I mean, chemotherapy is a brutal process. The first chemotherapy drugs were a derivative of mustard gas, but it does have the nifty ability to stop cell growth, which is handy when dealing with runaway cell growth, but it can also harm other types of cells that grow a lot, like hair follicles. While modern drugs work in other ways, they're still pretty nasty, with the usual side effects of hair loss, fatigue, nausea, and a knocking out of the immune system. Another way we attack tumor cells is through radiation, where radiation beams are aimed at a tumor and stop its growth by damaging its DNA. While the immediate side effects are minimal, it might feel like a sunburn. Other long-term effects might be more damaging, and radiation isn't 100% effective. Some tumor cells could get left behind, which is a problem with surgery too. And some of these treatments are nasty and painful and seem to leave the job unfinished. So why haven't we come up with anything better? Well, there have been some cool new ideas put forward recently. Researchers from Duke University are looking to treat tumors with polio. Polio, a horrible virus, used to run rampant and kill thousands of people a year and paralyze thousands more, until the introduction of a vaccine in 1955. You'd think the world would never want to see the disease again. Yet, over the past few decades, scientists have re-engineered the virus, which seems to knock out a brain tumor's defenses, allowing the patient's immune system to finish the job. Whoa! Give the diseases diseases! Another new idea might make surgery a little easier. Some researchers from the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center in Seattle propose injecting people with scorpion venom. Right? Sounds crazy, I know, but bear with me here. The venom is injected into the patient's bloodstream, crosses the blood-brain barrier, and makes its way into the brain tumor. Tumor paint, as it's appropriately called, consists of two parts. Scorpion venom has to find its way to the brain of its prey to paralyze it. Turns out that that same compound binds really well to the surface of brain tumor cells. The other part of tumor paint lights up under fluorescent light. This could be huge. That way brain surgeons can see the tumor literally glowing and see where the tumor stops and the healthy brain tissue starts. But with any kind of new experimental treatment, it's best to be cautious, very cautious. We hear the term cure for cancer in the news a lot, and sometimes we never hear another word about those treatments again. And it's okay to be optimistic and skeptical at the same time. And remember, say it with me now, more research is needed. All right, guys, would you rather have scorpion venom or mustard gas injected into your bloodstream? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons and keep coming back here. We've got new episodes every day of the week. Can you go one whole day without producing trash? Take the Zero Waste Challenge this Tuesday, April 14th, and share your experience with Seeker. Go to the first link in the description to find out more.